let them steal our vote. We have candidates running for office right now who are literally running off of the big lie. The election was stolen from Donald Trump. Stop the wokeness and stop the Democrats from stealing another election. That is not language that we can ignore, not after the U.S. insurrection. They saw this push from Trump to try to subvert the 2020 election. They believed that there was fraud. Nearly a third of Americans still believe that Joe Biden won the 2020 election due to fraud. People are very concerned on how the fix can be put in, that somebody may try to fix the election. And since 2020, state legislatures have responded, introducing hundreds of election integrity bills aimed at creating safer and more secure elections. But is it voter suppression, Jim Crow 2.0, or something else? And more importantly, is our democracy in danger? The scale of new election bills that were introduced this past year is really unprecedented in the modern era. So we saw more than 500 bills restricting voter access in some way or another over the last year introduced. Reporters at 538 created a database of these new laws and categorized them into major groups, like limiting voting options, or limiting voting time, or expanding voter ID laws, or increasing voter roll purges. And most concerning to some election experts, creating partisan roles in local elections. As far as concerns about whether this will suppress voter turnout or not, it's really hard to kind of know at this point because it's sort of unprecedented to see this huge wave, the sheer volume of changes. When you add them up together, it kind of becomes like death by a thousand cuts where it really would reasonably have an impact on, on voter access. Election experts warn that these changes could go beyond voter suppression and become voter subversion and potentially changing election outcomes. If you look at local election board elections, people running for those positions, there's been an increase in partisan people who believe the big lie, believe there was election fraud, trying to get those positions of power in their local elections. And that's concerning because that's not based on evidence. It's no longer about who gets to vote. It's about making it harder to vote. It's about who gets to count the vote, and whether your vote counts at all. The president and his administration, Stacey Abrams, and their far-left allies have lied about the Election Integrity Act from the beginning. Democratic groups are now pitching recruiting efforts to find, train, and support candidates for local offices and election boards to help fend off what they fear may happen in 2022 or 2024. Republicans like State Senator Mike Cuff, who sponsored a number of election bills in Montana, aren't buying the rhetoric, though. What I tried to do and the other legislators carrying these bills is to make a good system and process better. That's what it was all about. It is yes. not about trying to cheat somebody out of being able to vote. It's too easy to throw darts and say voter suppression. He did that because he's a racist. He, you know, all, all of these things that, that get thrown at you, that uh, that's not me. What I did is try to make it more foolproof, more bulletproof, to make it so that more of our constituents have confidence that their vote is going to be counted. Efforts to instill confidence haven't been felt countrywide, though. Polls suggest Republicans' confidence in the upcoming elections remains low compared to Democrats. Even efforts to audit recent elections found that it did more to reinforce Republican concerns around voter fraud than to alleviate them. One of the most successful voter suppression tactics is to sow confusion into voters, right? And so when the voters were hearing all this, they're not legal experts. They're not going through a 96-page bill, right? So right now, voters are really confused. And not just are they confused, they're scared. Voting rights organizations like Fair Fight in Georgia are working to educate voters to respond and understand to these new laws which they claim suppresses votes, particularly aimed at people of color. We look at it in three different buckets. One, being able to register to vote and stay registered. So if you have a accent mark over your name on your driver's license, but the Department of Driver Services forgot to have that accent mark on that same letter in the voter registration base, 
they would then negate your voter registration simply because of a hyphen or accent mark. The second big bucket is making sure they have access to a ballot. Georgia closed over 200 polling locations across the state of Georgia. This left a lot of rural Georgians, specifically black rural Georgians, having to travel or drive 20 to 30 miles to simply vote. And then last but not least, the third bucket is making sure their ballots are counted. So whether it's provisional ballots that are given out, we're seeing those getting rejected. Evidence of voter confusion is already mounting. In Texas's primary on March 1st of this year, the first election since its new mail-in ballot ID procedures were implemented, nearly 25,000 mail-in ballots were rejected, a 12-fold increase in historically typical rejections of mail-in ballots. And in future races, margins like that could mean the difference between winning and losing. Joe Biden won Georgia by 11,000 votes. In the municipal elections, we saw enough absentee ballot request forms being rejected that if you were to use those numbers and scale it up for 2022, that would have amounted to over 32,000 voters who may not have been able to vote because their request form got rejected. Voting rights advocates say stricter photo ID laws and policies like eliminating same-day registration disproportionately hinder students and the elderly from voting. We need to ensure our elections are safe and secure and strengthening the voter ID laws, I feel was a big step in that way. In this day and age, you're required to have a photo ID for so many things in our society. I think it's okay for the state of Montana to say we want to make sure that only Montanans are voting in this election. As far as removing the voter registration from voting day throws a whole bunch more work and stress on the people who are trying to conduct the elections. My responsibility is to be registered ahead of time. I'm sorry if somebody misses it somehow, but that's been the case. You know, that's always happened. And each of us has to look ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, I have some responsibility and I'm going to do it right. When you look at what people are truly concerned about, which is hey, can I get a polling location closer to my house because you just shut one down and now I have to drive 30 miles? That's the real concern. Or hey, I really liked voting by mail because I work seven to seven. <laughs> so like, can I please have access to vote by mail again? Those bills are not going to fix these lies and conspiracies that they are claiming are happening. Instead, these bills are coming after things that work. While 19 states passed restrictive voting bills last year, numerous legal challenges to these laws are still underway around the country. This is probably, I believe, maybe the most important bill I've ever carried, ever will carry. The right to vote, the ability to hold free elections, that is the rock, it's the cornerstone of our democracy. This is not for me. This is for the future. I think we're kind of at a crucial time that if we don't get it right, it can go off the tracks to where it's really hard to get it back on. What is at stake is, I think we are going to see where American democracy is truly gonna be in the next 10 years. If we, in this moment in the midterms, are not able to elect people, who believe that every eligible voter should have access to a ballot. We might have a Congress who believe of restricting access. We might see them then try to roll back voting rights in such a way that it could set us back for another decade. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.